Well, Growers Edge, I think, has made us more money by allowing me to survey the local bids that I'm in the area that I want to sell my grain. The local elevators and the ethanol plants know that this information is is out there, so they've got to be competitive if they want to get the grain. You know, we've been able to uh, maximize our return on our farm. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is Monday, the 20th. We have the market trading lower here today. Also, we got crop conditions out uh, after the market closed. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but before we do that, let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see where we close off the day. Corn trading down 14 and three quarter cents. Soybeans down six cents and wheat in Chicago trading down 21 and a quarter cents here on the September contract to 532 and three quarters. Across the newswires, we did see Taiwan flour mills issue a tender for 104,000 metric tons of wheat from the U.S. Also, GASC is issuing a tender for 55 to 60,000 metric tons. It'll be interesting to see where the U.S. Uh, stacks up in terms of global competitiveness. But my thoughts are that uh, U.S. wheat is still probably priced out of the market here. Uh, but we'll see uh, if any U.S. wheat is offered in that tender. Now, guys, keep in mind export inspections came out early today. Corn, soybeans, wheat all beating analyst expectations with corn coming out in at 1.1 million metric tons inspected for export beating analyst expectations which range from 600 to 900,000 metric tons so very positive there for corn soybeans with 306,000 metric tons also beating analyst expectations and wheat with 489,000 metric tons beating analyst expectations which range from between 200 to 310,000 metric tons now let's look at this chart I just want to show you a little bit of where we are you'll notice we cut right through some support there right around 421 uh, that was uh, an area that we had uh, that was a previous high back in February and a previous high back in March. Uh, my thoughts here is that we may open up a little bit uh, lower here uh, tonight. It's, it's a possibility uh, that with the crop conditions report coming out, for the most part within analyst expectations, uh, we may move a little bit lower, but I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of stabilize a little bit here tomorrow, uh, maybe trade down the earlier part of the session with a little bit of a rebound um, to, to close off the day. My feeling is right now, when you look at corn and soybeans, you know, we've had a very significant rally and now we're getting a little bit of a sell-off here, but my feeling is that we'll probably chop around these levels. I don't necessarily think the weather forecast is that good and we're out of the woods yet when you look at crop losses from the oversaturation of the eastern grain belt. Uh, my feeling is uh, really uh, that we'll probably uh, chop around these levels uh, as we move through the growing season. The weather uh, in the second half of the growing season is going to be absolutely critical if we're going to see any sort of recovery in yield um, or any sort of continued deterioration. So my feeling is we still warrant uh, probably some of this weather premium. Uh, so wouldn't be surprised if we kind of uh, find some of our footing here tomorrow. Now, when you look at uh, soybeans, you'll notice that we did have resistance here last week. Uh, resistance right around that 1030, 1040. Now we bounce down. You'll notice there's a nice little trend line. Uh, found support right around 990 here. Uh, that's right on that trend line. I still think we're probably going to be consolidating in this range between 990 and 1030, 1040 here uh, for, uh, for a little bit to come. I don't necessarily think we're going to sell off right away uh, because we do still have uh, crop production concerns. I don't think we would sell off or rally uh, before the August report. I think the August report is going to be absolutely critical and it'll give us a little bit more uh, direction here on prices. But in the meantime, wouldn't be surprised if we kind of chop around these uh, price levels. Now look at the weather outlook. This is one of the things that really contributed to some of the selling pressure here we saw today. You'll notice throughout most of the week uh, until the end of the week, Saturday and Sunday with really the exception, but most of the week is going to be cooler than, uh, than normal. Uh, should get a little bit warmer throughout the Midwest here on Saturday and Sunday, uh, but not overly so. I mean, it looks as though uh, in the Delta area and also uh, uh, Kansas, uh, could be getting a little bit hotter than normal, a little bit of a heat event there, uh, but nothing uh, that's too uh, concerning in terms of overall crop development. And then when you look at the uh, precipitation, look at that uh, top right-hand uh, map of the U.S. You'll notice that 
We're going to get some precipitation there in the plains, uh, but really the eastern part of the grain belt is going to get a little bit of uh, of a break of overall precipitation. So that's going to be important to see and that really uh, takes a little bit of the stress off of the crop over on that side of the U.S. But we did see crop conditions come out today in Ohio and Indiana both uh, with pretty significant concerns there uh, for wheat quality. So that's going to be something we're going to want to be paying close attention to. The SRW wheat quality in both of those states uh, is really lacking. It seems as though there's high levels of vomitoxin, uh, low test weights, uh, and, and basically some, some of the crop has been very difficult to even sell uh, considering the crop quality. So that's going to be a story we're going to want to monitor here going forward. Well, let's take a quick look. Corn conditions here uh, staying at 69%, good to excellent, but you'll notice that two percentage points move from the good category over to the excellent category. So I guess when you look at it that way, we saw a slight improvement, but when you look at the aggregate good to excellent ratings, we stayed at 69% here. When you look at soybeans, you'll notice that we stayed at 62%. Analysts were expecting to see a slight decline. We just didn't see that this week, staying at 52% good to excellent, or excuse me, 62% good to excellent. Uh, that was very positive to see. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be one of those things that, that may put a little bit of pressure on the soybean market early on in the morning. But like I said, um, although the weather uh, is shaping up and looking a bit more positive, I still feel as though there is some significant damage to this crop uh, that's going to keep this weather premium under us. I don't necessarily think all this premium that we put in the market over the last month and a half is just going to evaporate like that. I think it's going to take a little bit more uh, time and I also think it's going to take the August WASDE report. Other than that, guys, that wraps up today's show. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, please give the office a call. The number is 877-472-4607. I look forward to seeing you here on Tuesday. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Take care.